Good morning. Welcome back to ADHD Fabrication. It's a beautiful, sunny 37 degrees this morning at, oh, I don't know, 8 o'clock. 37 degrees start to the day means summer's winding to an end and winter's going to be here soon and we're going to be buried in snow. We have a lot to do before winter hits, so I decided I'd bring you guys along to see how much progress we could make in four or five days' time. Yeah, well, I like my grits, all you imagine, you know. My goal for this morning, it is, like I said, about 8. I leave around 11.30 to head to Montana. I would like to get this back out front. There's a bit of a bow. It's kind of hard to see. I got most of it out. It's pretty much right underneath this upper deck piece right here. So, I'll get this dragged back out. I got started on this project, got it all braced up, tacked, went to start welding, and my welder stopped again. The past six months have been spent diagnosing my welder. Since I have my welder going again though, I would like to get this at least framed up. Just a mobile home trailer. Is over on that corner of the property right over there other side of the cushman's other side of the greenhouse it was like right there we tore it all down and saved the trailer so this is gonna move down there by that van let's get to it That's annoying. I have no idea why my camera did not record that. Maybe I just didn't press record and I thought I did. But we got the scion moved. There's just a, a couple little oopies. I don't know what my plan is with this thing, but eventually I want to diesel swap it or something. That'd be cool. It's the only reason I haven't gotten rid of it yet. But now we'll get that trailer in. I have to drive in a bit but I made good time with getting this out of here so or out here out front so I'm gonna back it in and do a couple of the braces and 
All right. These rails are looking pretty straight. Oh yeah. Can't really do the head cam anymore. That's all the time I've got for today. We will be back at it tomorrow. We won't actually be working on the trailer tomorrow. We'll be working on the RV structure out there. But I got that piece of angle, that support done. And I also welded that one out. I also took off the piece of channel that was over here so that we can angle that coming off the back. And then this is a real quarter inch piece of channel rather than this, I don't know, it's eighth inch, super thin. It works for when you got a house on it because it all holds it all together, but definitely making this thing a bit more rigid. See you tomorrow. Bit of a late start today, but we're gonna get going on the RV structure.
So this was something that was not planned whatsoever. I did not intend on doing this this weekend, but I talked with my neighbor and my neighbor has a 30 inch vertical saw blade. It's mounted to a table and set up in a way that you can cut firewood logs with it currently, which I like that aspect of it and I'm probably gonna try to keep it so that I can still cut firewood logs if I'd like. But my use case is an actual sawmill where I can mill myself two by fours and planks. So what you're seeing now is me going to pick up a sawmill and you'll see more of that in this episode. All right, good morning. It is now Friday. We're going to do some work on the trailer again. Probably going to do some work on this too. Just picked this up from a neighbor of mine. Be able to cut firewood with that. You put your log on there, have an engine run into that strap, spin in your big old man killer here, and then you run your log into the saw. That functionality will 100% be staying, but I will make it to where I can unhook those chains, and this can go to the ground. And then I will extend this bed out and build some kind of roller system to where I can mill down wood and make myself planks. So we might do some stuff to that today as well. But we'll start with the trailer. I don't think I'm going to quite deal with the angle on the back yet. So this one will be coming out and then that'll be angled for my ramps. Let's get to it. We'll see what happens. I'm working with the metal that I got. so. Okay, we are starting with the trailer, but as I said, I do not have an extension cord, so my welder can only go like 10 feet. So this needs to get out of the way so that that can get out of the way. This thing weighs like 4,500 pounds. It's an NHC 250. It's a Cummins diesel semi-truck engine. And we're gonna test my forklift and see if it can move it. machine so the capacity isn't listed on it and I'll be honest I haven't done much research since I got it but I'm pretty sure it's a 6,000 pound the tires not squat nearly as bad so
an update before going back into time lapse. We got the eighth inch channel all torched off of the sides, all the ribs that went in. This is the existing quarter inch channel that I put in. And then that piece there is a new quarter inch channel by six. This is quarter inch by four inch square tubing. There is a seam right there. It's going to be supported underneath, so I'm not that worried about it. But I did have to bevel it, and I did. I didn't have to. I suppose I could have just torched over it, and it probably would have been fine. But I actually beveled that. I did a root pass, and then did a fat caterpillar over the whole thing. I thought about doing a little, like, diamond gusset on the sides. I might do that still. I'm not saying I won't, but I didn't yet, so... As you saw, I also brought my little brother out, taught him how to run a grinder, paid him to grind all the little thingies in here, told him he doesn't need to get them flat, just needs to get all the sharp stuff off. He did a pretty good job. Alright, let's get back to it. <laughs> Forceful close. I ran out of welding wire. So, that's where we'll be done for the night. I got this fully welded in. Luckily, I was almost completely done with the last weld of that piece of two inch right there. I got that one all aligned, wedged in between, and then just a clamp on it so it doesn't go anywhere and get it out of the shop for now so I can shut the garage door and I'll get welding wire tomorrow so I'll get this all cleaned up and I'll see you in the morning I'm doing some reading it's saying that like 15 16 horsepower is about good for a sawmill with a bigger blade than that with the right amount of rpm so I was thinking that other owning generator pull the actual generator head off of it set it up right there on this side where the Wisconsin used to be because that's 16 ish horsepower and more foot pounds of torque than that the issue is that would be straight drive I wouldn't have any rpm control aside from changing my gearing which would be doable that's not really an issue use case that engine for this would be way better these are pretty much my two options at the moment this is the one that I did the revival on. It could probably start up and go right now. This one has the stock filters on it. I have not done anything to it, so I don't know that it runs. And that diesel's a lot smaller and would fit better right there where the Wisconsin was. Those two rails. Like I said, it wouldn't have a transmission and RPMs wouldn't be adjustable aside from by changing the like physically pulling the, the pulley off and putting a new one on. Alternatively, this is a four cylinder 1.5 or 1.6 liter uh, naturally aspirated diesel out of a 70s or 80s Volkswagen Rabbit. It was something front wheel drive, they all were. So it's a front wheel drive transmission. All right, I pretty much talked myself into it. We're not using the Volkswagen diesel. That would be cool, but that could be the lifeblood for a little car or truck, which would be cool, or a go-kart. Something drivable. This is less usable in a drivable application, seeing as how it has a wide open throttle. Also, it's, it's load sensing. It comes on and you can idle it low, but then it senses load and it idles it all the way up and it'll run on hill which is more so what i need for an application like this sawmill because then when it's halfway through a log and it loads down it will peg out so i think that's going to be our our lifeblood right there okay i just wanted to inlay some context here 
I spent about three hours messing with the Onin generator that I have not started yet. And I came to the conclusion that I believe that the starter is either fried, locked up, or just needs beat on enough. But, with all of that, I decided, hey, I'm going to stop wasting time and use the engine that I know works. Alright, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. That's the engine I just had out where the starter was bound up. I don't know what's going on there. That's a project for another day. The fuel system hasn't been gone through. It's missing a sediment bowl. Don't know if the fuel pump works. Don't know if the high pressure works. Just a lot of variables there. This guy, we just did a revival on. If you haven't seen it, check it out wherever, somewhere. This one runs. It's got brand new fuel filters on it. And I know it all works. So I think this is what we're going to end up using. I'll do a little test run before I start tearing into it. See if she'll go... for me. Now we pull the generator head off and dress it and get it ready to go on there. <laughs> as I'm editing this that when I finally was victorious and pulled that thing off of there me and Riley Riley was crying I was hitting it with heat and pulling it off and finally we got it off and apparently the camera died shortly before that and I didn't know but you'll just have to believe me it came off you'll see in the next scene <laughs> just the air gun and then we'll paint it nice thick coat of paint all over it went with purple and black of course it's mainly because these jugs were so rusty that they was literally like fleck in between each one that i had to scrape out Alright, 
back on the RV structure. The goal is to have an upright just like that, but right here and an X beam with this post rather than it going. Okay, so there's this design here. It goes from the base of the post up to there and the base of the post up to there. We're almost doing that, but I plan on putting a man door right here. So this post is gonna start right there-ish, buried in the ground, and go up to our post there. And then this one will be at the base there, and go up above the door. And then I'll be able to frame out a man door right there, set you guys up, and we'll get going. beam up there there were some tribulations it was a pain in the ass but it's up and secured thank you it's up and secured for the night I'll have to dig this hole out on that side a bit bring it in line and that'll bring that over and then I'll fully secure them And I still left plenty of room so I can frame out a manway door right here. I'll just run board from there, boom, board from there, boom, door. That'll be about it for this episode though. There will be more on just about all of these endeavors that I've recorded on this channel. I don't know how much more of the RV, that's not really 
something I planned on recording. It just happened because it fell in the four or five days. But there will be more content on the wood mill, the sawmill, the diesel engine, the uh, trailer. I'm probably going to do it. it the sawmill and the trailer are probably going to get their own set or either one long video or a couple of videos. So I'll see you guys next time. And remember, don't let your meat loaf.